The 7th Army speeds the freeing of all southern France as General Patch's men reach Lyon, third city of France. All Germans are fleeing north, except a few snipers left behind. And French and Americans quickly clean them out from a hospital where they hid. With quiet restored, the celebration starts in earnest with special cheers for the French commander Tassigny. But there's little pause for the Allied troops who push up the Rhone Valley amid wrecked German equipment in pursuit of the once powerful German 19th Army. It's not equipment alone that they leave behind. They're dead, number in the thousands. The town of Borg is passed on the chase north, and thanks for the Yanks echoes the reception in other liberated centers. Warm kisses aren't rationed in Borg, and it's a good thing. She seems bent on kissing the whole Seventh Army. Through reception such as this, the troops push to Belfort Gap, southern anchor of the West Wall. In the north and in the south, we're poised to strike. In one of the largest mass surrenders of the war, near Beaugency, 20,000 armed Nazis are herded to the rear to be disarmed. These remarkable Signal Corps pictures were actually taken behind what were then the German lines. Major General Elster tenders his revolver to Major General Robert Macon in token of surrender. The German general bitterly blamed the high command for the plight which sent almost two divisions into captivity. Fritz here seems to feel the humiliation more than his two-footed pals who are glad to be free of Yankee steel. Hey, don't we get in on this surrender too? It's the end of the line for these supermen who form only a small fraction of the prisoners taken since D-Day. Prisoners who will have time to think over the Hitler fables.